G'day golfers. Today's golf lesson is about how to hold a golf club. Well, we're actually going to show you a drill that's going to help you to find the right grip for you. We're also going to cover some of the common pitfalls and mistakes a lot of club golfers and new golfers fall into. I'm Glenn Haynes. Welcome to Aussie Golf Pros. Are you the best golfer you can be? Let's make taking hold of the golf club easier for you. Let's make sure we're starting with the right size grip. You can check that by just putting your top hand, so it's left hand for a right-handed golfer, taking it on the club and making sure that a couple of the fingers are touching the pad of your thumb. If they're coming right round and three or four fingers are touching that pad, then the grip's too small for you. And if you can't reach the pad, then that means the grip's too big for you. So we want a couple of fingers touching the pad. And before we take our hold on the golf club, the first thing we need to do is put the club behind the ball and aim at our target. We see so many golfers take hold of the golf club and the club face is a bit too closed or a bit too open and then they twist their hands and that's obviously affecting the position of the hands on the club. And that's a common mistake that we see quite often with a lot of golfers. We've got to get that sequence right, club face, aim at target and then we take our hold on the golf club. The other big mistakes that we see are just getting the club in the palms too much. It seems that it's come from other sports with fatter grips but we definitely want the club more in the fingers. And that's the big error that we see a lot of club golfers make. You can't get a lot of power and control if the club's too much in your palms. So if you take one thing from today's lesson is get the club in your fingers. That's gonna give you a lot more control and stability over the club face. All right, so let's go through what we're really looking for and we'll have some close-ups of the grip so you can really get a sense of what you need to achieve when putting your hands on the club. We start with the top hand, aiming the club face at the target first, then the top hand, as I said, we want that in the fingers, so we're gonna place the grip in the fingers. Generally, we're gonna come down the grip about a half inch or so, come down a little bit further if you want, if the club's a bit too long. We don't wanna be holding the club right on the end here, You're not gonna have quite as much control and stability. So coming down the grip a half inch, get it in the fingers. We don't wanna be diagonal that's gonna get the club too much in the palm and we're gonna see that wear mark on the glove just there. If you're, check out your glove. If, if there's a wear mark there, then you've got that club too diagonal, it's too much in your palm. Look where my wrist is, it's underneath the club. We don't want it there, we want it on top. So perpendicular across, base of the fingers, that helps you get that wrist on top. And a lot of people think that the thumb should go on top of the grip. That's not the case. We want the thumb to go across slightly. That means it's gonna fit better in your bottom hand. So we've got the top hand in position. After we've got the club face square, then we're gonna fit the bottom hand on, nice and close. We see too many gaps with a lot of golfers. Gaps here between the fingers, gaps between the hands, hands apart. You're definitely gonna lose a lot of power and control over the shot. We want the hands working together. That means getting them close together. And what a lot of us do, a lot of the pros do is interlock or overlap a finger so we get the hands even closer together. You can go with the 10 fingers, but let's make sure that there are no gaps there. I do encourage you though, if you're keen to have a go with interlocking or overlapping a finger there to get those hands together. I use the interlock and that's probably the most popular now. It used to be the overlap was the most popular, but so more and more golfers using the interlock grip now. It just seems to meld those hands closer together. Again, in the fingers, bottom hand goes in the fingers. Now, the reason it's so important to get the club in the fingers is we want to be able to maneuver the club. We want to be able to hinge and release the golf club through the swing that gives us a lot more power over the shot, but a lot more control as well. Let's liken it to throwing a ball, because we are actually using a throwing motion through the golf club. And if you throw a ball, where do you put it? You put it in your fingers. It's nice and light. You wouldn't try to throw from your palm of your hand. That would be just a shot put. It's not gonna go as far. But if we need to release the club, almost like we release a ball, then get it in the fingers, and it's much easier to snap those wrists and get some power through the shot. We're gonna get a lot more control and feel over the shot from the fingers as well. So as I said, nice and soft and light. If you're strangling the golf club, then you're gonna lose club head speed and you're gonna lose a lot of feel for the club. A lot of miss hits and, and misaligned shots just because of that tension. It is pretty much the golfer's number one enemy, tension. Again, that thumb goes across slightly and we need to be able to get those hands working as a single unit and nice and mobile. Let's hit a shot. Have a waggle, release that tension. Aiming at our target. And a good golf swing does start with a sound grip. 
Now we have some checkpoints for you so that you know where your hands are in relation to the club face so that you can be much more accurate. Here are a couple of uh, things to note, is if your hands are turned too far to the right, so I can start to see three to four knuckles on the top hand, I've turned the hand to the right, and this right hand's underneath too much, and palm up to the sky, that's called a strong grip. And typically that's going to either make it very difficult to release the club, and you leave the face open and hit a slice, or if you do release the club, then you're gonna tend to close the club face too much and hit it with a hook. So that's a strong grip. The weak grip means that your hands are turned too far to the left. This is for a right-hander. So now I can't see any knuckles on my top hand and the palm is pointing down to the ground. That typically will open the club face for a lot of golfers. A lot of shots to the right for a right-hander, a lot of slices because of that weak grip. Also, it doesn't go very far. They call it weak for a reason. It, it doesn't have a lot of power there. Now, of course, some of the tour pros use slightly weaker and slightly stronger grips. But you've got to be careful watching tour pros as they practice so much, they can pretty much make anything work. If we're talking about the best grip for you, then being neutral, being somewhere in between too strong and, and too weak is definitely a good starting point and helps you to be much more consistent. Because remember, you're not hitting thousands of golf balls like the tour pros. And then the other big mistake that we see is both hands underneath. So weak top hand and strong bottom hand. See that very often. So that means that the bottom hand's doing all the work and the top hand just gets forgotten. Golf is a two-sided game. We want those hands opposing each other, getting those wrists on top so that they are much more in control of the golf club. And that's gonna give us that freedom of motion through the golf swing to help us to generate the maximum amount of power and potential for you. And of course, the best control over the club face. So our checkpoints are, we wanna see two knuckles on the top hand and this V formed by your thumb and forefinger, that'll be pointing to somewhere around your trail shoulder. See that V there? When we get that bottom hand on, it's pretty simple. We want the palm pointing towards the target. We don't want it pointing up to the sky, as I said earlier. We don't want it pointing down. We want it pointing at the target. That's really important. That's probably the most important factor here with positioning is getting the bottom hand palm facing towards the target. And it's gonna look something like that. No gaps, We're covering up the thumb. You can't see my gloved thumb, my top thumb. And that helps those hands work as a single unit together and nice and neutral. Much easier to control the club face from that position. The fact is that when we're changing a grip or slightly adjusting it even, then our hands wanna fall back into old patterns just because it's more comfortable. So this is a super drill just to help you to improve that comfort of a new hold on the golf club, but also to remind you of actually where you want your hands to be. So we're gonna do this in two stages. Number one, we're gonna use the top hand and the top hand only. So pop your bottom hand behind your back or in your pocket. I've just got a wedge here and we're just gonna hit some little shots, just gonna hit it a few paces and what that's going to do is help us to get that top hand in the strongest, most stable and most comfortable position. Because typically when we get both hands on the club, that tends to affect the grip of the other hand, which is a bit of a problem. So what that's going to help us to do is get a little bit more comfortable with having the wrist on top. That gives us that support and stability. You wouldn't try to chip one hand with your wrist around the side, but that's how a lot of golfers hold the golf club. So wrist on top, as I said, seeing those two knuckles on that top hand, and actually see if you can make good contact. It's gonna be quite challenging, especially if you're sort of dominant with that bottom hand. That's all you need to do. But I want you to do lots of them, not just a couple. Just hitting it about five yards, feet close together, it's a little chip shot, so come down the grip a bit. Make sure you can see those two knuckles and you'll be much more comfortable getting used to that grip with one hand on the club and just getting more au fait with it. Then we'll do it with the bottom hand. So remember what I said earlier, we want the palm facing the target. I won't see anyone chip one-handed with the hand like that underneath, but that's how a lot of people hold the golf club with two hands on. They feel stronger and more confident that way. <laughs> we're gonna lose a lot of control. So with one hand on, we're much more likely to get into this natural palm facing the target position. And again, just hitting at a few paces we don't want this to happen, don't want a big swing, just a little swing. We're getting comfortable with getting that hand in position on its own. And that's a good reminder. So check how you would hold the golf club with one hand, just there. Then check the other hand, just there. And then put them together 
Make sure that you're repeating those positions when you put both hands on the golf club. The golf swing does start with a sound grip. It makes sense to get it into a fairly neutral position, not too strong, not too weak, but definitely in the fingers so that you have more power and more stability over the club face. Good luck. Thanks so much for watching. Are you the best golfer you can be?